celebrities you didn't know have HIV. There are still a lot experts and the public have to learn about diseases like HIV and AIDS. Most of the time, you might not even notice or know that famous people get diagnosed with it. Here's some celebrities that have lived with a condition. Number 16, Magic Johnson. Even if you're just a casual basketball fan, you've at least heard of the name Magic Johnson. For one, the guy's name is Magic. For another, he's also one of the best basketball players in NBA history. Now retired, Magic Johnson currently works as an entrepreneur, broadcaster, and philanthropist. He famously advocates for HIV AIDS, now after his diagnosis with HIV, which he publicly announced in 1991. Many people commended Johnson for being open about the disease, mostly to dispel the stigma that it was a strictly gay disease that heterosexuals didn't need to worry about. Upon his diagnosis, Johnson retired immediately, but did play with the Lakers briefly during the 1995 to 1996 season. Number 15, Chuck Panazzo. He's now 70 years old and continues to play music. Most people know Chuck Panazzo as the bass player for the classic rock band Styx. He's been on the music scene since 1956 and doesn't show any signs of stopping. Panazzo announced he considers himself a gay man and also that he is living with HIV, all in the same year back in 2001. If you follow his career, you'll also see he's very active in campaigning for gay rights and AIDS awareness. To this day, he tours with Styx. When talking about living with the condition, Panazzo says it's just part of what he has to do, that he doesn't want it to interfere with everything else. Number 14, Jerry Herman. If you've seen Broadway shows like Hello, Dolly, then you've watched something that Jerry Herman composed. American composer and lyricist Jeremy Herman is now 87 years old. He's been nominated for a Tony five times and won two as well, is a recipient of the 2010 Kennedy Center Honors. Just a few decades ago, treatments for HIV AIDS was still in development since it was a new disease. Herman was diagnosed in 1985, just four years after experts first clinically observed the existence of AIDS. At the time, Herman became one of the small fraction of people who survived long enough to see experimental drug therapists become more prevalent. Number 13, Freddie Mercury. With the release of the film Bohemian Rhapsody, the general public has a little more knowledge about the life Freddie Mercury lived. The Queen singer and frontman, Freddie Mercury, whose real name is Farouk Balsera, still remains as one of the most influential artists in music, but also in the LGBT community. Mercury became one of the first huge rock stars to pass away due to AIDS. He got blood tested for the condition in 1986, though at first he publicly declined he had the disease. He would keep this up for years. By 1991, Mercury retired his work with Queen. A few months after, he'd pass away due to complications with AIDS. As a tribute to his influence, his fans graffiti art and leave messages on the wall outside his home, which he left to his ex-wife, Mary Austin. Number 12, Andrew Sullivan. You might not recognize his face much, but that's because he's more famous for his writing. Author, blogger, and editor Andrew Sullivan's repertoire includes being a former editor for The New Republic, published works on The Atlantic, Time, and The Daily Beast, as well as writing and editing six books. Sullivan is one of the major pioneers, if not godfather, of the political blog. He also serves to advocate LGBT rights and mainstreaming the community to be seen as more accepted and part of the norm. Since 1993, Sullivan tested HIV positive. On the topic, Sullivan does mention that people in America never treated him any differently for being HIV positive, gay, or British. Number 11, Amanda Blake. She was pretty big during the 50s, thanks to a little show called Gunsmoke. People knew American actress Amanda Blake best as her Gunsmoke character, Miss Kitty Russell. Her real name, Beverly Louise Neal, didn't seem like a name made for the stage. She actually passed away before any word of HIV AIDS was associated with her. Her past with health problems beforehand included dealing with oral cancer in 1977, but after her passing in 1989, it was only then did her doctor claim she actually died due to AIDS. Number 10, Andy Bell. In an interview with Melody Maker from 1986, Andy Bell noted that he wanted to openly be gay and that he and the band he's part of, Erasure, consciously write lyrics that could apply to either sex, and he's received a lot of respect from that. British singer and musician Andy Bell started on the music scene in 1985. In 2004, he publicly announced that he knew of his HIV-positive status since 1998. Aside from being in a successful band, having sold over 25 million albums with Erasure, Bell also spends a lot of time creating recordings for charities. He worked on a cover for Let It Be and Too Darn Hot in 1987 that would be included on the Red Hot and Blue album, where the funds went to HIV AIDS research. Number 9, Easy e Eventually, he earned the title of one of the godfathers of gangster rap and was one of the members of the infamous N.W.A. 
Easy e born as Eric Wright, lived a party-hard lifestyle if we're going to believe what straight out of Compton showed us. To support his family, he started selling substances at a young age. Although he dropped out of high school, he did earn a GED. Part of the original NWA lineup, Easy e hit it big with the group in the late 80s, and then would release his own debut album, Easy Does It, in 1988. He was only 30 years old when he died, having married his girlfriend, Tamika Woods, just 12 days before his passing the same year he was diagnosed with AIDS. Some say he was actually 31, due to the falsification of his birth date. Number 8. Rock Hudson People were shocked to hear that a celebrity like Rock Hudson got diagnosed with AIDS. Roya Harold Schuer, or Rock Hudson, earned his stardom after continually being cast as a leading man in many a Hollywood film between the 1950s and 1960s. Most people didn't know he was even gay until much later. For a time, he and his agent, Henry Wilson, were in a romantic relationship and Hudson kept his homosexuality hidden. He kept his illness under wraps. Though after an appearance on TV's Doris Day's Best Friends in 1985, people noticed how haggard he looked and how incoherent he spoke. He passed away that year. Number 7. Greg Luganis at both the 1984 and 1988 Summer Olympics, American diver Greg Luganis took home gold medals for the springboard and platform and remains the only male diver in Olympic history to sweep the diving events at two games in a row. In college, he was a theater major and from there he'd start his path to Olympic diving. He did appear in a few movies between the 80s and 90s though. In 1995, Luganis announced he was HIV positive, the same year he'd release his memoir, Breaking the Surface. Luganis married his partner, Johnny Chaylot, in 2013. He works with the Human Rights Campaign to defend LGBT civil liberties as well as those with HIV and AIDS. Luganis, now 58 years old, has been called the greatest diver in history. Number 6. Anthony Perkins If you couldn't tell by the hair, this photo of legendary actor Anthony Perkins is from the 70s, but you may know his face best from his younger years during the 50s and 60s. Anthony Perkins, of Psycho, fame both acted and sang. Just because someone can be so expressive on screen doesn't mean they're that way in real life. Perkins was notoriously known to be very shy off screen. During his life, he was never open about his apparent bisexuality. Reportedly, he had relationships with fellow actors Tab Hunter and Rock Hudson. He married Baron Thea Berenson in 1972. He wasn't diagnosed with HIV until 1990 during the filming of Psycho 4 at the beginning. He passed away two years later from AIDS-related ammonia. Number 5. Tina Chow during the 70s and 80s, you probably saw Tina Chow's face on many fashion campaigns or runways. A successful model even in her 30s, Tina Chow also worked as a jewelry designer. Those in the fashion world consider Chow as a huge fashion icon. Born as Bettina Louise Lutz, the daughter of Walter Edwin Lutz and Mona Faruqi. She became better known as Tina Chow after marrying Michael Chow in 1972. She became an AIDS activist because so many of her friends were diagnosed with the disease. She'd be diagnosed with AIDS in 1989 and made her diagnosis public. She treated it by moving to California, meditating, and going on a macrobiotic diet. She continued to work with advocating education of AIDS until her passing in 1992. Number 4. Holly Johnson The lead vocalist of Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Holly Johnson, has been on the music scene since 1977. Before Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Johnson used to play bass for the band Big in Japan. Frankie Goes to Hollywood found fame during the early to mid-80s and stayed together until 1987, when tensions within the band grew high and they eventually all went their separate ways, not before Johnson won a court case against the record company for restraint of trade. It would be in 1991 that Johnson became diagnosed with HIV. He didn't expect to live too long after that, and even wrote his autobiography, A Bone in My Flute, not long after. Today, he is 58 years old. Number 3. Arthur Ashe In 1963, the first black player selected to the United States Davis Cup team became Arthur Ashe. He's one of the biggest professional tennis players in history. Arthur Ashe turned pro in 1969, but played in the amateur tour back in 1959. He would retire from sports in 1980. Not long after his retirement, Ashe contracted HIV. It's not totally clear how. It may have been due to a blood transfusion he got for his heart bypass surgery. He passed away in 1993 after suffering from AIDS-related pneumonia. Before his passing, Ashe founded the Arthur Ashe Foundations for the Defeat of AIDS, as well as the Arthur Ashe Institute for Urban Health. Number 2. Charlie Sheen Everyone knew Charlie Sheen lives a really wild life. From his substance abuse days and legal issues, Charlie Sheen has proved that he may be a good actor, but he's also a wild card. The year 2012 marked the time of his public meltdown. Remember all that tiger blood and winning talk? In 2015, Sheen would publicly announce that he was HIV positive and that he had been diagnosed about four years earlier. To manage his condition, he takes a triple cocktail of antiretroviral drugs, 
and stated it's impossible he infected any of his partners. After his announcement, Google reported that the greatest number of HIV searchers ever recorded in the United States and that Sheen's diagnosis somehow corresponded with the 95% increase of the over-the-counter at-home HIV testing kits. Experts involved in the study dubbed it the Charlie Sheen effect. Before we get to number one, now is the perfect opportunity to stop for a second and remember some of the greats. Mercury was among the first huge stars to pass from the disease, and this year he was remembered in the film Bohemian Rhapsody. Have you seen the film? What did you think about seeing Freddie brought back to life? Number one, Liberace. He was a child prodigy and continued to amaze audiences well into the rest of his life. Liberace began his musical career in 1936. Did you know he was born in 1919? It's amazing to think someone like Liberace existed at the start of the 20th century. Liberace began playing piano at the age of four. He was known and applauded for the flair and showmanship he'd exhibit in his performances later in life. In the 1950s came the premiere of the Liberace show on TV. In 1985, he was diagnosed as HIV positive, though he kept it a secret. He passed 18 months later, vigilant in keeping his illness a secret and never wanting to seek any treatment. Thank you for watching. If you liked today's vid, hit that like button. For more interesting facts, make sure you're subscribed and that you turn on that bell notification.